Welcome back to Hello Nigeria. I'm sure you've all been waiting for today's top trending stories. And Bimbo from our very own newsroom is here to give us all the updates and more. Thank you so much for joining us. Oh, it's always a pleasure. Thank nice you. Here, so we have a lot of stories to get through. It's as though so much is going on in our polity. And I think the first one that we should start with is the Nigerian Governors Forum because they have declared that they were not elected to only pay salaries of civil servants, but also to provide good roads, electricity, education, and other necessary amenities for the people. Now, addressing journalists last night after a meeting of the governors in Abuja, the chairman of the NGF, who is also the governor of Zamfara State, Abdulaziz Yari, said that there was no way that the governors could perform magic if there were no funds. The governors called for the examination of the national income in the last 14 years to enable them to agree on continuous issues of minimum wage implementation. Yari said it was a pity that state governors had been limited to the payment of salaries alone in their respective states, adding that the lack of funds has hindered them from carrying out their responsibilities in other sectors, such as health, electricity, education, roads, among others. Now, speaking on the controversial minimum wage, he said, quote unquote, we have a committee of six which represents us in discussions with the committee headed by the Minister of Labour, Dr. Chris Ngige. The committee has, has yet to give us the final reports. They have given us an interim report that at the federal government level, over 82% is being spent on overheads, which cannot move the country forward in terms of infrastructure development and development that we need now. So on our part, we are saying that we are going to look at how our income is taken from our final account from 14 years ago so that we can come up and stay in the middle. Bimbo, how exactly do we take this news? The Governor's Forum have come out to say that they were not elected to pay salaries. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, that's, that's uh, I don't know, their job description uh, it doesn't contain all of that, but it seems that is mostly what they do. Because over the years, and it's uh, still a bother to me why we've not really addressed this because, you know, we claim to be a federation, mm. a federal government, but we don't practice to federalism, which gives states autonomy to handle their resources, which means that they can generate more funds and then they can go ahead to do most other yeah. things. But most of the time they have to wait from the federal. And uh, just like we saw some months ago, there was a lot of uh, back and forth as to how much, you know, really accrued to the federal mm. allocation account so that they can know. And then, you know, they are at the mercy of the federal government as to when they get the money and then what they do with it. But if you really know how to generate funds internally with what the resources you have, if you have control over it, then you can do most other things. Would you say, because reports came out not too long ago, that 14 states in Nigeria cannot survive on internally generated revenue and they need federal allocation in order to survive. Would you say that the fact that we don't necessarily practice true federalism has led 14 states to not being able to survive on their own IGR? Now, that, you know, all that goes, you know, in, into some other arguments. Do we really need 36 states? Do we? Um, we, we have 36 states now. The United States, as big as they are, only have, what, 50, 52 uh, thereabouts mm. states? We don't need 30, you know, 36 states. There are, um, and there are even talks, you know, that there might be more states. Some are agitating for more states. Um, um, Ogu is asking for an Ijebu state uh, and all of that. We don't really need all of that. We don't need to be broken into the tiniest of the tiniest bits that we can have. But we really need to pull resources together. We need to work together. We need to be able to manage what we have and then you know, contribute um, a token to the center as you know, true federalism is practiced mm. where we borrowed the idea from. In the very beginning when we had uh, the regions, you know, uh, being autonomous uh, before the, the, the first civil war and then the army, you know, created this strong center uh, and all of that. The regions were working well. Every region had its own, um, like a constitution. The southwest had its own minimum wage package that Aulowa said that he could pay and then he went ahead to pay it and then he did some wonderful things, you know, with cocoa money. The, the southeast also, you know, had its part. The, the uh, north had, you know, their... Uh, thriving uh, legumes and other, you know, forms of... Uh, so everyone was doing fine. If we are not going to come back to states 
maybe we should go back to the regional system and then maybe these governors will not because to me um it's also an excuse you know for them not to really dig deep uh, dig deep and see where they can get more revenue from because lagos state is doing you know quite well um lagos is not an oil producing state yes you might say lagos has a lot of commerce uh, over the years, uh, being the center of government and uh, and all of that, you know, it's been able to pull a lot of resources, uh, yada, yada, yada. But even with that, some other states, you know, can do better. River State, with all of its oil, has not really pulled its weight. A lot of states in the South-South, even with the oil, are not really pulling their weight. So maybe, and, and they will always have the fact that they don't have control of their resources as an excuse. So um, they, they need to Is find... Is it a valid excuse? Yeah, in a way, you can excuse them. It's not such a strong ironclad excuse, but, you know, they can always get away with it. But what about anytime. when it comes to the non-payments of salaries? Because this entire report came from the fact that the Nigerian Labour Congress came and said that they want to implement the national minimum wage on X date, right? Now, the Nigerian Governors Forum came forward and said that it can't happen, that we can't actually do that by that date. Now, we had this argument yesterday on radio, and we were saying that, is it a case, is that valid or is that invalid to say that you cannot implement a new national minimum wage? Because right now, we're having a situation where in some states, governors can't even pay salaries. Yeah, the, the figure... Uh, the NLC and all the other, you know, um, labor unions came mm. up with was something that had a reason prior to this administration when we were making mad money from oil. And since then, um, oil revenue has depreciated drastically. Yeah. Um, under the Jonathan administration, I think we made excess of about $300 billion in oil revenue. According to figures in this administration, we've We've not even made a hundred million, a hundred billion dollars in revenue. So you can see, you know, the gap that's uh, over two hundred billion dollars in in difference. So we we are having to pull resources now from um, from taxes. You know, we've, we'll be able to do a lot now. You know, from the FIRS system now. You know, there there's more people under the tax now. So it, it's been a blessing in disguise, uh, kind of. But we've not really reached, you know, the the figure that they saw then and they were like, oh, so we were making this mad amount of money. Why couldn't we, you know, mm -hmm. pay this? We are not there anymore. Yeah. You know, so we, we, we need to recalibrate. We need to, you know, go back into ourselves. We need to think about what is workable now. I can understand where labor is coming from. I appreciate their frustrations. Over the years, this should have been done. Perhaps if it had been done, then, you know, we'll be worse off than we are now. Maybe, maybe we'll be as bad as Venezuela. But then know, at the same time, does an right increase now. in the national minimum wage necessarily mean something sustainable if there is still no strong system of welfare for the people? Because whether your salary is 20K or 150K, if you still have to pay out of pocket for everything that you're meant to receive on a welfare system, the salary is still not going to be sustainable. You're taking the words right out of my mouth. You know, we need to build, you know, while they are arguing um, increase in wages, on the side, government is also trying to meet up with this massive $2 trillion infrastructural debt that we have staring us in the face, which if we keep going at the rate that we are going, it could take in excess of our 700 years for us to catch up. You know, you can do the math. So it's, it's a huge dilemma. We, we are at a point now where, yes, you know, things have been, over the years, we haven't done, it's been... It's been at snail space, and we really, really need to start running right now. We need to find we need to find the funds. If you are sick, if someone is sick in, on a dead bed, you need to spend money to get that person well, and that is where we are now. Sometimes you need to borrow. Sometimes you need to go and break your piggy bank. You you just need to get that person well. If you need a surgery, it costs money to Nigeria is like a. It's like a patient. It's like someone who needs a heart transplant, a kidney transplant, a blood transfusion, all at once. The average and Nigerian those is money. one sickness away from poverty. <laughs> That's what Dr. Muyo Abadegeshin said when he came on the show. And Chukudi and I have held those words so closely because, unfortunately, that is the reality.
To enjoy more of these our Ugonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.